welcome, welcome. How you guys doing? Welcome to the stream. We are now officially streaming. A little something I was working on earlier. Get myself warmed up. And so let's see. How you guys doing today? How you doing, Galactic? So nice that you could come on by. I'm so glad because I really wanted to do this tutorial with you. Um, I could see you're so keen. You got you have so much knowledge already, you know. And just I feel like you and a few other people just need to like have this little lesson. Just just really give you some more power and unity to make whatever you want. I'm not gonna sit here and make a game. I'm not gonna hear get into anything like in depth. I want to give you intuition. To how to make things and I remember when I was first learning to code I don't think anywhere in the books anywhere told me how to put brackets in the right spot you know and until you can move past these little not that you have a problem with brackets but I was saying my problem was like whoa when do I need a bracket what what are all these things mean and I just wanted to make it clear for some people so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna close this project. I'll probably open a new, make a new project. So we got something just clean, and we can come back to another project later. I think it'd be a good idea to just to have a little bit of theory, lecture theory on how Unity works with scripting and stuff like that, and then we can go to a bigger, a bigger project and just have a look and go, oh, okay, I see how that kind of links together now. And that's that's always a good thing. That's how I learned too. Taking apart bigger projects. So I'll just exit that. Let's make sure this is saved before I close it. And um I'll just close it completely. And make a new Unity project. probably easier this way. If you guys have any questions, just ask. And if I don't answer your question, ask me again because I probably missed it. Um, I think what we could do, Galactic, since you're here, how far did you get doing your trigger collider script and that whole thing working? Because that'd be a good spot we could start with. That's probably a couple game objects and one script, and that might be really good. So we'll do a new. Alright, new 3D project, call it scripting tutorial, save it in my documents, community, create a project, you actually never figured it out. So let's, two, let's kill two birds with one stone. I'm going to make, I'm not going to write it for you, well I, I can write it for you, but what I want to give you to you is, is how it works. Um, that's more powerful than giving you a script, like, what I want the basic idea is that I guess I want to get cross is this theory of like more of Legos and mechanical way of programming right every game object is really just a Lego piece just like the directional light here it's got it's a Lego piece in the real world it doesn't have any dimensions as far as size, because we haven't given it that kind of thing, but it's still, it still is a Lego block. And the, the most simple Lego block you can get is a transform, which is a game object, right? So every game object has to have a transform. And that's, you know, obviously the most simplest one. Delete. 
that's what we call that also an empty game object, right? But an empty game object still has a transform. It still has a has a has a with all these things in it, you know. Now, you probably know half of the stuff I'm gonna say, but other people probably don't. So I'm gonna just talk for different levels. So pick up what you can, and like I say, if anybody has any questions, I'll move on, move. And I'll answer those as easily as I can. So what you are doing is we wanted to just do like a basic trigger collider setup so that we could just activate. Basically, it's kind of like a switch in a way. I'm just going to alt control Z. I'll get my light back. Badow. Alright, so here we got the same gear. Where do we start? Where do we start? So we need a camera, obviously, to see anything. We need a light. If we're gonna need lighting. We can just leave those there, and then we can create an empty object. <clears throat> and you can see an empty object just as a transform, and a transform is a component. And I'm uh, just using that word and putting that out there because it comes up a lot. And so understanding what a component is, this game object only has one component called the transform. So you, so if you ever try to call get component this game object you can never get a game object because a game object's not a component it's a game object just so you know just how the wording goes sometimes it's like the wording and everybody knows how to add it, make a new script you can do it a couple ways you can either just right click and create a new script here and just name it you can also where you want to put it you can add component and name your script something you know some script you guys probably know this. And if it doesn't come up with a list, then you can say new script. Yes, this is the what I want to call it. Whatever. We can do that now. And I'll just call this um, example script. Okay. I'm going to call this example Unity script because. Writing programs for Unity has a location. Yeah, it has a location. Because that's what you meant. That's what transform is. Yeah, it's a location. Positions, rotation, everything, whatever. I'm going to call it example Unity script, right? We can just create an ad. When you do that, it'll automatically just like throw it straight in the assets folder. You want to keep all that stuff organized if once it gets bigger, you'll go along and keep it organized. But for now, we'll just do that. Later on, we might do something. It automatically just gets populated. Oh, I should be... I like to put my console over here. The one I'm streaming, I forget, so you guys can see everything. So if I click on my assets folder, that new script I made, it's got nothing in it. It defaults, it just puts this information in. Let's have a look at it. I'll actually cancel Visual Studio and I'll use Mono Behavior for your first script because it's your first script, you probably don't have Visual Studio installed. <laughs> if it'll even work, I don't know. I haven't been here in a while. Close this. One sec. We just do want it to open up anyway. Okay. Um, yes. Yeah, so since you can't get a game object, you can get the transform. You, that's correct. The transform is a component, but the game object isn't, and that can be a, a weird thing. But if you have a transform already, you can get the game object really easy because you just say transform dot game object. That's already built into Unity, so that you can just grab whatever game object that it is already. In fact, you don't even need to say transform.gameObject. You say game object. And we'll, I'll go over that right now. With the lowercase g. That is referencing to the transform. So let's just start straight there. I'm not going to go 
do anything, but we'll just start with these two things here. Example script. Um, model develops here. I'll bring it over. Resize it. And I'm using this model develop so that it's... Everybody has it. You know what I mean? If you're new to, new to, new to scripting, then this is probably all you'll have. Once you get a little bit better, then you like you go on to Visual Studio. It's just really is the only option. Now, all the text here is was defaulted by Unity. It made that when you say make a new script, it just makes this every time. You know. You can get rid of all these comments they always put in. They're just annoying. And you, we, and you know, we don't need any of these things, really. But these are the names of things that go somewhere. Now, there's a um, good link. Let me um, see. So if you go to um, Mono Behavior. Cool to look at this. Let me see here. So, you see all these, this list here. I'll give you the link. Copy, paste. So, that's something you'll probably reference a lot, you know, because you can't remember all this stuff. But like a, you know about awake and fixed update, late update. These are all the um, methods that you can actually add if you wanted to use them. You know, in fact, you used a few of these yesterday. Not on collision enter, but you did on trigger, which would be down on the T's. You see on trigger enter and I exit. See, you can add any of these things to do your behavior that you want to do in your script. There's so many ones. The reset one's cool because that works when you right click when you um, go right here and you hit reset that will run whatever's in that in the reset method. It's kinda cool. So with that tool <laughs> and knowing this list obviously here is start and update is the last two. Um, those are the ones we use the most. Start, update, and awake. If you're doing physics, you do um, on fixed update and stuff like that. Um, depending on what you want to do and how you want your behavior of your game object to be, you can add all this stuff. You know, and this is when that's that's the first part. So it gives you automatically start and update. And start, you know, you usually set all your variables or set your environment ready to start running. And then then start happens before update would ever happen. But it's only going to run once. And then update's going to keep on running. Every frame, that is what it is. 60 frames a second or whatever you set it to. So yes, people say, don't put too much in update. That's true, but you just got to realize that's part of the game. You don't put all of your code in update, like setting your variables every frame and update or whatever. Uh, checking a boolean or doing some stuff in update, even your input keys and in code, those things need to be in your update so they're smooth and smooth. So that's where your code goes, is inside these. And if you add other things, you know, like you, you'll get to that. Okay, so, um, back to the script. Right, we have, so we have to start and update the same ones. You can add all there's all sorts of ones to add, you know, if you wanted to. On enables good, a, a, a cool one to use, and stuff like that. But what's so cool? So you, so outside here we can only we can only put like like a public or a private, like a float or whatever, right? We can't put just anything. Right? Out 
here. But we we can't, you know, you can't do that inside of here at all because it's not accessible. What am I doing here? So you know that. And I, I know you know this stuff. I'm just trying to make the point so we can do something with that. Now, even let's just delete that first. Because what I wanted to show you is all the things that are locked inside this word mono behavior. Because as soon as you put that there, like if you took that word out, you couldn't now, you can't use start and update. They don't work. They would just be, I mean, they would still be there, but you would have to sit manually call start or update. These start and update methods automatically get called because you're using this mono behavior. Right? These aren't variables. These are methods. Just like you could write your own method. Void. Void means you're not going to your method doesn't give you anything back. That's all that it means. Because sometimes you'll put stuff there. So it's like void um, add these numbers. Right? It doesn't matter what we call it. Now, I always like to put my brackets on the same line. So that's the minimum you need for uh, something. And all your code obviously goes in here. So method, function, method, function. They're, they're the same word, same thing. They will all work. This one will never be called unless I call it somehow. Like if I went and start and I said add these numbers. I'm going to do the little thing behind it. When it starts, the f it'll go and run this code, whatever's in there. You know, so they're all methods, so we can just jump around with methods and move methods. And you got to be careful, you know, when doing for loops, you don't keep calling a method inside of itself and it keeps iterating down. Under could be could be madness. <laughs> So, which is nice though for organizing. This is this is the best part is that you can in, in in coding you can just do whatever you want and keep putting more and more little methods. But the mono behavior part is has all these things on it like start, update, reset. We can even do that. Like you, it's really cool. In fact, we'll just do it because you probably never use reset. So if I do type in void reset and run that, hit enter, do a bracket, hit enter, do another bracket. That'd be two enters, right? We do that. So we got this method reset. And I say, um, I'll just do some printing. That's just as easy as to do. Print. That's the format. I reset. Okay. And we'll just is that we'll just file save. Come back community. I'll add another tag on here. Dead tag. Come on, give me that name. You can see. So I'm not I'm still in editor mode, right? I don't have to hit play or nothing. Um, our script has nothing on it and can't declare. But if I hit reset right now, boom! It printed. I reset, and you can re you can see that in the. I'm not covering it up, right? Yeah, you can see it. Isn't that so cool? Um, you can do as many times as you want. So I didn't actually call. You know, I didn't have to make any code to call that. Reset is, reset is built in to the mono behavior. It's already there working for you. If I mean, I, seriously, if I, I put it to resets I, and I save it, right? There's no errors. There's no compile errors. It still works as a valid method. But if I come back here and it recompiles, um, clear this. Now, when I hit this, you know, it says reset. Nothing happens. You have to name it exactly. 
what these names are. If you miss it, it anyway, you know, it, it won't work. That's always a problem. The one I always get trouble with is on gizmos draw. See, I just said it. It's on draw gizmos. <laughs> on draw gizmos. I always type on on gizmos draw, and then I'm like, oh, my gizmos aren't working. Because you don't get a compile error. So this is, this is something you end up coming to a lot. Now, inherited members. This is where I wanted to get to next with mono behavior. You already have the word transform. You have the word name. You have the tag. You have game object. Okay, so, and enabled. Okay, so this is so cool. These are already built into that same thing. So, what I mean is, so we can re turn this back to reset, right? And we, we've seen that, that that testing work. So, what I was saying is, Hey, water retard, how you going? Fill me with the knowledge. <laughs> yeah, you, I've, you can cause the internet to crash, which is basically, yeah, while loops, man. A while. Just, just don't use while loops until you're really good. Just do not use them. I guarantee you, you will crash. Like, save everything. Close Unity down, open it back up, then do your while loop coding. Just in case something freezes and you in it and then Unity crashes, you'll be back to where you were that last before the last the last time you saved and closed. Okay, so what I wanted to say, inherited members, is look. So check this out. If I type in the letter G <laughs> A what? Is that just, um, don't give me that crap. This is why I don't like to use mono behavior. right why would uh so this is why i don't like to use mono behavior because i should be able to type that in and it's not telling me that i can type it in the debugging is not as cool i shouldn't get any errors no Oh, I did that on start. I should have did it on a reset, but it doesn't matter. So game object's name is game object, right? That's this word. That's game object. This whole game object. Its name is game object. Let's change it. Our test game object, right? And I'll even do a space. And if I hit play, we'll hit enter first. If I hit play, the console should say our test game object. So what we just did is show that the word game object is the game object attached to the script. All right? Example script. We said, hey, game object name. So we can do anything with the game object. Anything game object does, we have that available to us now. So you can go to the API for game object and do all sorts of things. Now the game object has a transform, always, right? But there is no need to say game object dot transform, even though it's totally acceptable to get the transform that way. It's just redundant. It is built in. So you'll have to use the word transform. Hence, 
that. You want know all the things you can do with transform, you can just click on that. And it'll give you all its variables, you know. You can do child count. I was using that today. How many things are underneath that transform? You wanna you wanna mess with the it does well it gives you basically all the things you need to do in order to move these. You wanna do the position dot x, dot y, dot z, or the rotation. You can you can scale. Let's <coughs> So what I'm saying, sum up again, is that because I have mono behavior, this word, I have all the stuff I can get. This is what you're doing in Unity. Almost everything you're gonna do is mono behavior. As you get better, you'll start making other classes that are non-mono behaviors and and understanding more about coding, but it's not important at this point. Understanding just the basic structure of how you talk in Unity with these little Lego blocks. It gives you the power to make anything, you know? So, right away, we can do transform, and then we can do anything we want from the transform. But that means this transform. That's what this is. This. This will still work. This transform, you know? You can put that word in there if, if you want to do it sometimes in your mind. <laughs> You can you can even you can talk to it in a different in different ways too. I mean they all work. You can still objects. You can still do this. Dot name. And I'll, I'll print that as well if you want. Print. You can try it. This is this is how I learned too. You know you just print out like the name of something. See if you're talking to the right thing. These are identical. Totally identical, except for this bottom one. I'll probably have to do more work. It'll probably get the transform, then go and find the game object, or it might just, it might not. It may be the same. Um, I'll file and I'll save that. I shouldn't do it on play. I should do it on reset or something. There you go. I'll clear it again. It prints it two times. Our test game object, our test game object. Because I was printing it twice. And I showed you two different ways. It's the same one. In fact, if I said, you know, get the ID of the game object, of the name. And you know what? I, I don't even think you need a game object. And why I say that is because we go back to. This this is um, the mono behavior part. Mono behavior has the word game object. Whoops. Transform name. So I, I just put the name. So name is the same thing. You know, when you ask for the name of it, that should be exactly the same. I was doing transform game object name. Well, the, all that's the stuff I can almost refer to it. Right, a transform as a game object. You can't do game object dot transform. Yeah, you can. Um, yeah, you can do that. You can do game object transform dot game object dot transform dot game object dot transform dot name. I wonder if that would still work. It's just it's it's just it's bad coding though. It's just more understanding what you're calling. That way you can write less code. Because right now I just realized I can just write name. I would have always done that. Watch this. This will work too. In fact, on reset, we'll do. Um, we'll say something. Um, print this information, please. I could put please on on there. So what we'll do is cut that out of start, so we don't have to restart this. And let's put this in reset. I'll put that here. So I'll make it even more confusing. So on reset, we want to print this information, right? Cut. We say print this information. See, it's it's here for you. Usually most things should be here for you. And you know you're on the right track. 
so that we don't have to enter play mode. So if I print this information, I want to print this name. That's the name of this model behaviors game object. But this is attached to a game object, right? So we don't have to say a game object. And we want to print this transform dot game object dot name. But I was telling you, they're the same thing. So we're gonna get the same thing. But now I can just do it with reset with a right click. File save. I'll clear the consoles and then just come over here and hit reset. Boom. Our test game object. Our test game object. It's kind of nice. We we know we only have one object right now, and we know what its name is, so it's really easy. And it's the best way to learn and and hone in on something because it, if it works perfectly here, you can bring it over easily because it shouldn't matter anywhere else. Yeah, it cuts some slack off. Yeah, stuff like that it does. It it can really cut slack off, man. Exactly right. And and just think, you'll see coders do this. I swear to God, I see it all the time. It's just not knowing how model behavior APIs work, and then just learning that like you can start any sentence now with you know with like these names, and from there you can do anything with a transform or a game object. That's all there is in the game. There's only game objects, and every game object has a transform. From that, you can do everything else. So like. If you get another game object, say that comes into your collider, we'll do that next. But now you have the game object. What can you do with the game object? Anything. You know. You know its name. You know it has a transform. So you can say game object transform position, do this, make it that. Or you can, or if you know it, and you know what your game object is too. So you're like, well, I know my game object has that light on it. So game object, get the light component. Get component light. And it'll find that, and now you have a, a reference to your light. So you kind of do everything off the game object view, you know, like the big view. Like each game object is a Lego piece, and you're building a game with just all these Lego pieces. They stack up, they do whatever. At first, they're just all stagnant, <laughs> and it's a scene. But then you want to give game objects behavior, and behavior is really a component. So really, I should I should almost want to rename this as a behavior, you know, um, like rigid body. That's that's kind of you know what's gonna do then, or a collider, or all those things are components, and that's how Unity works. Like you got a game object, and you start adding more and more behaviors. You can add a a follow, a follower, you know, a following script like you were doing. Um, so what we usually we call these components, or we call them mono behaviors, or even the behavior of of a game object. You know how you want it to be. You take that off, it really has no behavior whatsoever. Right now, its behavior is just you hit reset. It'll print out. It'll print out its name in the console. It's not really cool behavior at all. But I um. So know that reset's a great thing to have because you can do and reset all your values. So then we can make a few values in here, like a boolean, a public bool is inside. And I'm going to use that, right? Because I want to go and do the trigger next. We'll make another, we'll do that and set it up. It, shouldn't, it should be really easy. Um, they're going to be separate. I th you have, you have two parts to your your what um, Galactic Vienna wanted. Gunner Live Twelve. So let's go. What are you going? I would hate to learn programming by game programming. I'm so glad I learned by programming traditional stuff. Yeah, man. Having it's for me. It's all the above. I really admit. I love it's. I don't just do it with programming, it's like, say you get a new toy or something, you know, the first thing you do is you just play with it. <laughs> and then you go and you open up the manual like um, after that, you know, and you're like, oh, I can do that, oh, I can do that, oh, 
And then you go and you play with it. And you're like so much better. And that cycle repeats until the day you die. Okay. <laughs> That's cool, man. I'm glad. I really feel like a lot of people haven't had the basics or missed out. And I remember when I was doing the basics, there's, there's like the basic basics, like how where brackets and stuff needed to be or I mean you guys make sure you ask me any question just ask me because um, it helps steer what what I'm teaching right now hopefully this is all making sense so far file save I think I might switch over to Visual Studio though because I like the color better and I can almost it stands out and I can show you Visual Studio looks and knows everything you're allowed to type too. That's kind of what's nice about it. And it's a free install. It's not hard to use over this. This is harder to use than Visual Studio for me. Um, what did I want to... Oh, I, I knew I was going... I'm going to make... What I'm going to do... Okay, so what Galactic Vienna was asking in Discord was how... What he wanted was Correct me if I'm wrong. Cool. I'll, I'll go to I'll jump over to Visual Studio then. <laughs> Since I'm the, I hate the white screen too. It's kind of hard to screen, see. But but correct me if I'm wrong, Galactic. Um, what we wanted to do is that if a player entered an area defined by a trigger collider, then you have a game object move towards him, towards the player. So if that's tr if that's true, yeah, <coughs> yeah, Unreal's API, man, I, me and Unity, I loved it so much. I don't, it feels like, just the way it works, it's just so sweet and easy. I just can't. I can do everything I want to do. Why do I need? I don't need to go learn any more other game engines because I. I need to make a game now. I don't need to learn any more, <laughs> any more other engines. I can just do everything I need to get done here. Um, man, I'm losing my thoughts today. I got like a short-term memory of a goldfish. So you're, I think you're, um, galactic. What you're, um what you want to do is actually two parts and one of them is first just learning how to turn on and off a collider or knowing when you're in, in or outside of that collider and seeing that trigger and then once that, hap once that happens it's almost like you can take that mechanical trigger system so really if you just have a sphere if you think of it that way you have a sphere when a game object comes in the sphere goes hey something came in you know and when you go out hey something went out it does that for every object that has also a collider on it, you know. Um, the, 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 the sphere is just a trigger, so you can't, you don't like actually walk on it or anything. I, actually, that might be a setting in Unity, you might like turn on or off like a toggle if you collide with them or not, I don't know. But I don't think so, because it's a trigger. <coughs> we'll do that right now, it's really easy. And, um, but you need a another collider easy with a rigid body and as soon as that comes in it detects a rigid bodies come in all the collisions and stuff will be done on rigid bodies and they have to be done in play mode you can't do any collision or anything like that outside of play mode with physics because they use physics and so the, and I don't know why but you can't use physics in editor you have to use in play mode I guess that's because fixed updates running I just got hiccups all of a sudden so just so you know. Okay. Um, now, what we want. Now, I don't know right now. I don't know what uh, methods I totally needed or what they're called for the trigger one. And here it is. On trigger enter and on trigger exit. Let's just go look at their example. That's it. That's just about it. Other. 
So when this on trigger enter, it, it's referring to a collider. So it's only the only things that would have colliders are going to work here. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. So your other thing has to have a collider. You have your trigger and your collider and your other. But other, if it has a collider, it's also a game object, is it not? <laughs> so you can do whatever you want now. So you can say other game object. I think last night, Galactic, I told you other dot something, and I didn't put game object first. Because I was thinking other was a game object in my head, just because I was in Discord not looking. But, um... Other is going to be the collider that comes in. So now that we have that collider, and the collider is a component, a mono behavior. It's probably a hidden one because of Unity wrote it. So you can't go look at the code, but um, now we got other dot game object. Well, we can do whatever we want, right? In fact, we might even be able to go other dot transform. If not, we can go other game object dot transform and get all the get everything we want about it. Anything we want, any whatever. If it came in and it's got a collider, boom, we've got a reference to it, and we can do something with that. Okay, and so we'll we'll set that up now. That was our first test object. There's that is inside. Oh, that's what I was gonna do. That's why I was filling the bug. On reset. Is a good spot to put like is inside. Oh, we're going straight to uh, Visual Studio here in a second. In fact, I might just make a new script and just move on. False. Reset's a great place for if you want to do stuff like in the editor. Um, so if you're messing around. You know, and you've got, I'm going to just save it. So you're messing around with different things. You didn't want to accidentally, I think it's if you hit play. So you reset, doesn't run. So is inside, stays true. Stays the state, whatever I put it here. But if I hit the reset, boom, you know, it'll hit. It'll go ahead and re redo it. Which is kind of a nice trick. So you can read, you can do all sorts of stuff, you know, like by having that built in. That's such a nice little thing to have built in. That's what it's for. It's exactly what it's used for. So you could have a thousand variables here or uh, different states. You have like kind of like a default state, you know. Um, I believe it won't work. So if I do is inside equals false. Right, which I don't think it actually resets it here. It's only it just runs this method. I don't think it resets the script. Is what I'm trying to to um, get the point through. Clear that. Hit reset. Make it true. Hit reset. Oh, it does. I did save it, right? Pulse it out. Oops. Yeah. Well, I lied. I didn't think it worked. I don't know if it always did. All right. Goodbye, Mono Develop. That makes me think of having on reset with a timer that resets at a certain time. You could do that. I probably wouldn't use that particular reset just because it's monos, you know, and like. It may not have any issues. I'd almost want to make my own method. <coughs> um, and run a timer. There's a really easy way to make a timer. I'll show you with the time.delta time in the update loop. It's really um, cheap without having to make a coroutine and stuff. I can show you that another time. Alright, example script. We can just remove that. We'll just remove the whole game object. Okay, that was good. That was a good. That was a good little start. Let me create an two game objects. One is gonna be our player.
One is going to be um, an evil cube. And one more object. This will be our um, this will be our our trigger. So we've got these three Lego blocks. A trigger, an evil cube, and a player. Okay, let's um let's get them to put something on them so that it makes it's more discernible, right? So the player will add to just a capsule, right? In fact, we'll just do it underneath. No, we won't. I'll do it on top. Um, we can do it this way. Um, where do we go? We don't want mesh yet. We'll render. We go render or mesh. Mesh. No, we don't want mesh. Rendering. Um, I never do it this way. In fact, I do 3D object, we'll add a capsule, alright. <laughs> We're going to the capsule to play. That's what I need, I need a capsule collider, a mesh renderer, and a mesh filter of the capsule. But see, I'd have to do all that manually, so I would have to add mesh filter, and then I would have to go and look for the capsule. I should just do that for myself. But anyway, you you can you know that part, right? When you have these three components, that makes the thing. It's not a trigger; it's just a collider, and you want to give it a rigid body. Don't worry about gravity. Just do is kinematic. This way it won't move. It won't move unless you tell it to. Alright? That's it. This is all we need for the player. The minimum amount. The evil cube. We will add a mesh filter. And these are the available ones from Unity. The cube. Alright. It doesn't really look like anything. Because it's just a, fil a, a mesh. It doesn't have any rendering at all. So we need to add the mesh renderer. Ooh, now we can see it. We don't have a material. So let's add a material. Just the default material. And now we can see it. Now, it won't collide with anything because it's just a rendering of a mesh. So we need to add a component, a mesh collider. Look at it. If you type in the word mesh, it's kind of all your things you need are right there. Those top three things. There's even more things you can do later. Um, so mesh collider. You can do that. Remove component. You can also do a box collider. And that's actually more recommended. The, you want to use the primitive shape, not the mesh shape. That's the best. In fact, the capsule like will have a capsule collider, not a mesh collider. And you could use either one, and they'll both work. You have the mesh renderer. You can have a, a, um, a mesh collider as well, but the mesh collider is usually... Meshes usually have more triangles than the... You know, it's like a box. <coughs> F2 to automatically rename something. I don't even think I need that, dude. Like here. You're right. I like click it once and click it again. I just click it twice. One, two. But not a double click. Double click focuses in. But two slow clicks. One, two. That's why I've never used F2. But that's good enough. So we got player, 
Do I even need a rigid body? I don't know, but man. I would test with both, but I don't know if it would work with that one. But he, so the player's the thing that was, we're gonna collide it with the trigger, right? So make sure you put a rigid body. If you put a rigid body on, you don't have to worry about it. Triggers are static, so they're sitting in the scene and they're not gonna move. And usually you need to put that trigger and say, hey, I am um I think it's everything static. Actually I don't know if it matters. I'm gonna try it without it first. Add component. Let's add a sphere collider. And let's make it like two radius or something, right? Let's make it bigger than that. Make it five. Put him at zero. It's a player somewhere over here. Box. So over here. We've got no scripts yet, as far as I know. All I have to say is trigger. <laughs> now that will act differently. Now, we need to put the script on here, on this sphere collider. We have to add our mono behavior here. So when we say, um, when we go on trigger exit and on trigger enter, because obviously we're in our in our mono behavior, we had that that needs to be here, All right? So let's add a component. Let's just say um, player player trigger. And we'll do the script, player trigger, create and add. This automatically puts it in the assets like always. Visual Studio, get that one going instead. Oh my god, god. that's my stretching, oh that's loading. Oh. Much better to read, isn't it? You got purple notes. I really like my brackets in the same line. <laughs> I never ever get confused where they go or having to look for them or trying to align them up, even the top one. Um, so I'll just delete those out, right? That's all we need for a class. If you take this word off, Unity will mess up. You're not allowed to add it in Unity at all. You cannot use it. The class works. It won't give you any errors. You can save it. But what happens is, that was on the trigger, right? You get this warning. That's the associated script cannot be loaded. Please fix any compile errors. It's like, what's wrong with it? In fact, it won't even come up now on the list. See, even though I've got the exact same spelling, it does not know that it exists. Unity doesn't know anything about it. It's, it'll never know anything about it. It won't even look at it. It's not cool enough for Unity until you do that. As soon as you do that, it is now a component. It is now a behavior that you can add to game objects. It's direct relationship to all the game objects and all the things you want to do in Unity. And you can have other 
code. You can have scripts of code that don't have model behavior. And they're just public class, you know, my favorite methods. And just have a whole bunch of methods in there. And in here, you would have to go and look for it. But you would never be able to add it to outside of Unity. So we save that. Click back on Unity. And this should just, boom, be fine, I would think. Yeah. And now, add component player trigger. See, it finds it. <laughs> it, it's only looking for mono behavior things that you could possibly add. You can't know it. Add anything that's not. Which gives you an idea that everything is a mono behavior, you know? So, like I say, if you have the collider or you, of something, any of these things that you have, any of the components that you're going to add on this, even the player right now has a lot. So I can, I can say rigidbody.transform because everybody knows if your rigid body, if you got references rigid body, well, of course you got a transform. Of course you got a game object, and so you can reference from from any of these when you get a reference too. It's just a kind of a way how to get it around how how to think about it. Okay, player trigger, edit script. So we need when when something happens when the when something comes in my trigger and something happens when we leave the trigger <laughs> which is void on trigger enter and it's gonna look for a collider collider and we can call it other the other we can call it anything we want that word doesn't matter I don't call all the words. And then you need to do, see you got an error still. You need to do an open and close brackets. Because all your closed, all your closed code goes in there. Now, did I write it right? Let me just double check. On, trigger, enter. Mm -hmm. Void. That means it doesn't return nothing. It just does something. On, trigger, enter, collider. The reason I double checked is because the other one on collision, on collision enter, it's not looking for a collider, it's looking for a collision. <laughs> so it's different, it's not a game object. The collision is like a, it's like a point. Here's what, here's the stuff you have in collision, the contacts. The contact points generated by the physics engine. But see, you can still get to game object. Look, you still get to transform. You can get to rigid body, because if you have a collider, it almost thinks you have a you have a if you have a collider, now this is not a trigger. Now I'm not talking. It kinda already knows you have all this stuff. Do you know what I mean? Okay, so back to let's write up a script. So I was right. So we want to know. So obviously right now, so on trigger enter, tons of any object will come in. Oh, let's just do this. Print. Something entered. No, 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 no. Let's make it other dot name. All right, so other is a collider, which is a game object attached to it, which should have a name. If it doesn't work, you'd have to put dot. No, this should work. On trigger enter, print this other name. Trying to do it so simple. Clear that. And we have to do it. So I got the evil cube. We don't need to worry about that yet. It's just a trigger. I put that on top. We got a trigger. And it's just a sphere collider. And he says, I'm just I'm running it through my head. This is how I code. Got a sphere collider and this. And it says, well, when the trigger has been entered, print the other's name. OK. 
because it knows this other thing came in. This will not trigger unless an other, another collider came in. So I would think this should work. If not, I'll add a rigid body to this. So I hit play. Let's go to the scene. Grab the player. There. There you go. I got my output. One. Can you see the one? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Every time it goes in search, right? Not exits. Now it's when I exit, it doesn't, right? Unless I go all the way through it. Damn, don't you wish you could see that trigger all the time? Well, I'll show you a cool trick. It was that other method we were talking about. On draw gizmos what color you want gizmos dot color equals c o l r red and gizmos dot draw look at all the things you can draw frustums frustum I always want to say frustrum with two R's but it's one R frustum cube icon mesh ray well we want to draw a sphere because um, that's what we have here we're going to show that exactly right where's the center well the center of the sphere, here's our player trigger. You know, what's our center? Well, well the center is easy to find. That's our transform. The first thing, that's what we need, right? We have a transform. Right, we have a mono behavior. This is our center. We are the center. So transform dot position. That, I'm hovering over this. It tells me what I need. I need a center and I need a radius. Comma. <laughs> radius. Well, it wants this radius here. I want to put that radius there, 5. But if I change it, then then I got to go back and change the code. So what we can do is I can just get that number really easily, right? I guess the most expensive way to do this is different. Honey Bunny, how you going? Those bubble effects. Aren't those cool? Oh, I have some other bubble effects I need to have go across the screen. That's called power mode for, um, it's an add-on for Visual Studio. That makes the bubbles. We need a radius. I don't have one yet. Now there's a whole bunch of ways to do what I want to do next, and that's just get the radius here. I want to show you how to get that. From this script, we want to get this radius. So from here, we need to go, we need to say, hey, get the component sphere collider dot radius. It should work out that way. I haven't done it, but we can look in the API as well here on this screen. We'll just go back here. So we go. Um, so we're going to know a radius, right? So we want a float number. Radius. And this is going to be get component. So you can get components right away. 
and so you can write any component you want here. We're, we're trying to get a float value, so I'll show you in a second. New component, we wanted the sphere collider. S-P-H-E-R-E, -E, sphere collider. It's saying you can't get a sphere collider. It's not a float, right? We're not, we want the sphere collider. We, want, we wanted that sphere collider dot radius. By doing it that way, we made a we got a red. We'll be able to make a red sphere at this transform position radius. Hey, just like in the first part of the tutorial, I could also say this dot transform dot game object dot positioning. You know, I could do it the long way around too. You know, I could put this in front of that. This is what I love about um, using Visual Studio. If I put this there. It kind of like unhighlights it. It's like qualifier. This is redundant. There's no point in put, putting that. If I put in game object, I'm surprised it didn't tell me it was redundant as well. Double click, delete, delete. So that should be it, right? Transform position and the radius. We draw a sphere out of color red on draw gizmos. And what's cool about doing stuff here, if you can keep everything out of here, because what on draw gizmos will not be included in the game in the final build. So you can make all this stuff for yourself to view things. Even in even even if this was included in your game, the trigger part, but you're like you don't have to worry about optimizing this too much, okay? It might be a little bit this is probably the worst way to do it. Is because every time this thing draws, say this runs, say 50 times a second, when you're drawing those gizmos, it's gonna go and get the component every time, and that's kind of silly. We normally we don't do this. We we would cache cache this value. We would see we would we would actually make a reference outside here of a it's a private one and just make a sphere collider, and we would just check if the sphere collider is null or something when we need to reset it something like that or reset it one time when you start the script that way you're not always doing this get component every time and draw on draw gizmos is almost like like on an update loop you know it's running 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 all the time in fact you, you'll show you it now so save that we're just going to be able to visualize our trigger at this point boom hey look at that I drew a sphere I probably shouldn't draw a sphere but I'll show. I'll draw a wire sphere instead. Oh, I didn't uh, include the boolean. But now, if I change the radius, you can see. So on Gizmo's draw, it's yeah, it's 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 making that thing the whole time, you know. Okay, let's um. It's draw wire sphere. And the only reason you learn about this thing is you just. Man, I swear having Visual Studio helps so much. It just tells you. Or just go into the API and just having a look through when you're doing it on the day. That should be better. <coughs> there we go. So now we know when we enter and exit easier. You know, no matter what we're, we're, we've got that gizmo in our scene. In fact, you can do gizmos in play mode too. But I can't really move the player, can I? I get the right axis, maybe. No, it's like going behind it. Clear that again, so you can see every time I bring the player inside the red, I get a. I just player capsule one, out, come in again. And I just keep adding it every time I come in and out. And look at you know the, the collision detection. This stuff's running so many times a second like you can't make it fail there's it doesn't fail so that's it we have a way to detect when an object came in and so the trigger I said I didn't want to put a rigid body on it at first and um, if you don't see so it's all you need right is a trigger it's a sphere collider and mark as trigger if I take that off Um, and go to the player, 
clear my console that will no longer call the console will not show up anything I have to say is trigger there works perfect so that's even something you can turn on and off with code as well just like I did the rate got the radius on that sphere collider and that's I mean that's exactly what we were doing is how we talk to scripts But later on, you learn how to optimize it better, so you're not doing call git component every time. It's it can be slow, but if you you have to call it at least once to get to get a reference to the sphere collider, you have to call it somewhere. So what you could do, I I want to I don't I don't want to do it on start. I'm not going to explain all the reasons, but that's that. This is just a basic little method to be able to draw stuff and you know what I just stick that down at the bottom and I don't worry about it oh I was gonna add the if the boolean I don't need it but if what did I call it draw trigger if draw trigger what we did is go if not draw trigger return so this code won't even run unless you're um, you click this boolean, okay? And what would happen here in a final build? This would be deleted. You'd be left with a boolean random one there. If that bothers you, you know, don't use this method. If, if a boolean has problems sitting in your game, there's other issues. <laughs> You can write editor scripts to get rid of all that. So you can put as much code as you want into an, a custom editor script. But that's another day. That's another lesson. That's not for day one. So we can just manipulate this now. That is all we need. That is your Lego piece. <coughs> Once he's in there, then you want something else to happen. It's almost like we want to almost do, we almost want to give the box that behavior. We don't really want to do the trigger. The trigger's done. We don't want to do any more to the trigger. We don't, the trigger should not care about the player. The trigger should not care about the box. The trigger shouldn't care about anything else in the world. This way, it's always just that. It's just this player trigger. Well, I guess it can care about the player, right? So do we, we can unit run it by tag or by layer. Um, I think we were doing by tag. So we'll tag uh, player. On the player capsule, we'll tag it player. Hey, my trigger's not showing anymore. I have to hit my boolean. There we are. Um, What is control press scroll? When did you ask me that? Try to make the font bigger. Is it need to be bigger? I will. And that's control press scroll anyway. Whoa. Just like on Firefox or internet. I can't make the font bigger on Unity though. That's that's just how it is. All right, that's it. So obviously, we probably want to copy this and give some more behavior, and just change that word to exit. And now it'll also work. We just added the exit part now. It, no different. It guaranteed it'll work. There's no reason it wouldn't work. I'll be willing to bet on that one. But what you want to do? We want to get the name now of the player. So what we do, we'll just leave that print there, okay? So if if other is the player, right? That's what we want to know. If the other if the other thing is actually the player, we don't just want others names. We don't know what other is, but if the other is specifically the player, and we know that by tag. 
I want to show you something that's a big mistake. A lot of people do other dot tag equals equals player. And don't do that. This allocates memory. They have a built-in method already for you, Unity does, that does not allocate. And it's called compare tag. You can find it as soon as you type in tag. You'll see it there. There's tag and there's compare tag. So compare tag, it returns a boolean. So you don't need all this stuff then. It makes it even cleaner. But what's the tag's name? Just stick that inside there. Boom. That's it, right? So this is either going to be true or false. On trigger enter. Collider. That's what we're getting, right? That's what other is, right? Other is a collider. Inherited members. Uh, some of that and public functions are also there, things that are there too. And one of them is compare tag. That's exactly how they've said it. If other compare tag player, then we know that that other right at that point is our player. Or the player has entered. We can do something now. That's the correct way to do it. But I wanted to show you that. Because the other way tag yeah they don't show it that way that it's you're not supposed to do it the way that everybody does because I think that's like old tutorials or something but anyway there we go compare tag is player so yeah we're gonna find a player if he comes in right we'll print we'll move that down and then Of course, they're going to be the name. The tags player. Oh, the uh, name is player capsule, though, I think. Save. And copy that as well. Copy. Paste. And what I want to do is copy. I'll just show you how. Whoops. Did I save it before I exited? <laughs> I forgot how to do that. <laughs> yeah, if you're going to move anything, you always have a rigid body. If you're going to move it with physics forces, you're going to do. You're going to have no is kinematic. Use gravity, obviously, if you're going to use the gravity in the world or not. Um, some things you want it, some things you don't. <laughs> That's why I don't. <laughs> okay, back to where I'm at. So the player this right so what did I, I want to say I said something like so this is not working oh you know why I turned that trigger off oh no I didn't yeah I did okay I want to show you something it's gonna work now sphere collider I'm gonna trigger back on player capsule no trigger that's just a regular player didn't work oh you didn't catch that did you I was in play mode when I signed that tag earlier there we go enter and exit well, I'm getting different lines there All right, and if I move, if I go to the cube, clear the console, 
I shouldn't get anything. Now, this value here, this is trigger. Sometimes you want to ensure that it never ought accidentally, because you know sometimes you click here and you click enter somewhere. Look, I just hit enter. I didn't even click on it. Hit enter again. You know, like you and you uh, mistakenly do that in the back of phone call or whatever. And so what to do is if you're smart, you do void start. This is like in the start method. Like this is only run once. Say um, get component. All right, we gotta get the component. It's the sphere collider. All right, and what's the sphere collider? What do we want to get? Dot is trigger, and we want to make sure that that is true. Boom. Now, by doing that, <laughs> what will stop is you ever having to worry about it. So, this is my player trigger, and you know, if this is your script I'm writing here. I always want this to be true for some reason. Who knows what? So, but look at that. I hit play, it automatically goes true. Um, I wouldn't have had that issue just before. It's doing the, the by printing out my collisions and turn exit, and it's just perfect. BioQuick, hey man, how you going? You seem like you've been a busy man. I haven't seen you around much, but you've been into all sorts of stuff lately. It's been great. Is no worries. Came on, or I snowers. Welcome to the stream, dude. If you're still here, can you please explain how you can control a character with your mouse? I'm struggling with it. I would be totally happy to show you how to control to do that. Um, it's actually not really that hard. It's really very basic. It's more like, oh my god, there's just no magic. It's just straight up adding numbers in this direction. I think um, I might well, put that off for a little bit, but I'll be willing to show you that. We're almost we're almost at that point where we probably can add that on to what we're doing today. We're not actually making anything, but just kind of just playing with ideas of how Unity works, you know? And just some safety things and some tricks. Who knows where where we're gonna go next? But that's a good idea. So obviously all this works. You know, we've got this trigger system. We can it's like standalone. You think about it, like just only when that thing tagged player comes in and out. Is no words. Is snowers. I snowers. I'll call you snow. I like it. Thanks for the follow, man. Thank you very much for the follow. That's awesome, awesome. So, we've got our trigger. We made a nice little gizmo as well, so we could view it. We wouldn't grab the radius, so it's always exactly the same as the sphere collider. Before we move on, let's we'll just because we won't be adding anything more. I'll show you. We'll, we'll just refactor this to make it a little bit more optimized. Because right now, we call this get component sphere collider is trigger is true. We, get component is is expensive. And here I'm doing it every frame, every frame that the game runs. I shouldn't be doing that. I really want to just make a, a reference to the radius that's sitting way over here, right? This trigger radius is what I'm talking about. So it's always running, but at the same time, yeah, it's always getting the radius and, and going to that. But it's not just getting the radius. It's going here, looking through here, looking for a, the sphere collider, and then getting that radius. That's expensive than just getting the radius. You only want the reference once, you know? It's like, it's this equivalent of going, calling one friend to get another person's phone number to get another person's phone number. You just want the phone number. One way is a lot cheaper. Because really, when I'm saying phone numbers, I'm just talking memory addresses, aren't we? 
So what we do is outside here, we can do we can do it public or we can do it private. Private's the only one one we need. So you don't even have to put the word private, which it, it's defaulted to private. So I just want to have a sphere collider, right? And we'll just try the we'll just call this our sphere collider. I'm not into shortening words all too much. Not not always. And I'm not into putting underscores in the in the things either. I just it just makes it harder to type, harder to read. I don't like I don't like them. Anyway, so we have spherical letter. Um, you get this little underlined thing when it's a private thing that doesn't understand. Let me show you what we'll do instead now. How we're going to refactor this? So instead of this line here, what I'm going to say is um, our lowercase sphere collider, right? Our one that we just made equals. We'll go and get it. Let's go and get that sphere collider. Now. I only have to refer to this word every time to that's it. Never have to do anything again to get it. Now I'm gonna have an error probably down here. No, I'm not. But what I want to do, I can get rid of that. I can just do the sphere collider. Follow me. If you do it public you can actually see it and you can actually assign it if you wanted to as well I don't think this will automatically assign I, I foresee a problem on gizmo draw is gonna go it's gonna try to draw the radius of the sphere collider but the, the game because this runs in editor all the time there's no sphere collider in the editor yet because start hasn't run I'll show you what I mean so I'm getting a null reference exception and why that is because the sphere collider is not here it's here right I could drag actually in here and the null reference exception will go away and that's all that that's all good but there's no way to assign it automatically like on So that's why I'll get this no reference the whole time. It just kind of keep on Gizmo's draws is trying to find the sphere collider. It's like I don't know the sphere collider. If I hit play, it's automatically assigned itself because I it's that start did the um, all the work and as, and the and the and the the reference exception uh, reference exception goes away. Let's see where we at. So I, I foresaw that, now, but I wanted to show you the error and why. So for on Gizmo's draw, we don't care about performance. You're better off. Oh, well, there's. I want it to run. I want. I want. I want to go get that thing. There's other ways to do that too. So I could also say. I, I could also do another if statement and say if that um, if this sphere collider is null basically right now it's null right I and mean, if I didn't have anything assigned to it then don't run on draw gizmos or go get the thing and do it that's fine I could do that too right that is the other method in fact I'll undo what I did because I'll get that error, right? So I haven't changed anything. Same thing. Same, same as before. So one of the fixes is what I was doing was to show you the, the, null, the null reference one. It's very common. So if sphere collider equals equals null, right? We want to do that thing we did, that get component. Get the component. Then do the alligators facing each other, trying to eat each other. Get component. What did I have to get? The sphere collider, right? Big one. 
So what this does, oh, stop. And then you want it to return. So, and then that's why this goes away. So if I take that return away, I'll explain what's happening right now. You should kind of figure it out because I'm not making any silly words. So, before I was getting the red error on the side because Gizmo was drawing, it's like, hey, there's the sphere collider was null, and it's trying to get a it's trying to get a radius of something that it doesn't have right. Obviously, you know, it's a reference exception. So what I'm going to do in place, like I could put that get component in there, but I don't want to call that every time, do I? I can just call if it's, see if something is null or not. That's not that that bad of a check, and this is all self-correcting type of code. So now what happens is, it come, going down the script, it checks if it's null. If it is, well, it goes and gets the component. Well, if I didn't have the component there, it could still be null. And that's why this is going to tell me possible system null reference. It could. It could not be. You forgot to add the collider. But if I do a return there, well, what's it going to do? Every time it's going to go, is it, if I have my null, yeah, I get the component. All right, return. Is it null? Well, it either is or it isn't because it either found or it didn't. So it'll never, ever, have, this code will never run unless I have this, you know, it passes the, both of these gates. This is not a bad method to check something. And that way, you can, I, you can do this sometimes too so that you can get, eliminate having to do that here. But if you're doing it on Gizmo's draw, you probably wouldn't do because that's not going to work. So that's why I want you to understand that that's separate. And the reason we're doing it this way is because it runs in the editor. This does all the time. This never stops running. It runs in the editor, in play mode, and out of in and out of play mode. And um, what's the? Oh, not. It's the exact same thing, draw trigger. If draw trigger equals false, return. And the return just means it comes, it just stops going from any farther, right? And then on Gizmo's draw is going to be called again. It's going to come down here, up, oh, return, return. It just will always just, it'll just get this far. That's all return means. It can mean a little bit, few different things depending on the context return. It can, if it's inside of a for loop, or nested down, it can it can mean slightly different behavior. But right here, what this just means is it just this code stops. So if if draw trigger equals false return, that makes sense, right? If we don't want to draw the trigger here, we don't want to draw it, right? If it's false, then we don't we don't we don't, we don't care about the color or the radius and all that stuff. So. Saying if there was another way, but but there is a shorthand. Oh, you can also do it here. Does not equal false, right? You can do that too. Or does not equal true. That that'd be the same <laughs> as well. If draw trigger means true. If this is true, then return. If you put an exclamation point in front of it, you're saying, if not this, then return. It's just shorthand. And you know you can do whatever you want. You're allowed. Those those are three, four different um uh three, four different little ways to do it. You, you see it here too a lot of times. If sphere collider does not equal null, you know. In fact, you could probably even do this. Look, if not, if not sphere collider, you can even do that because I think that's gonna check for null. But I don't guarantee it because I 
there is a few things. Equals equals. Can you go not null? Yeah. <laughs> oh no, it gives me an error. What is so cool is how you can flip a very you can you can flip a um a boolean really easy with that trick, right? So um um you would basically say draw trigger equals not draw trigger. And that'll flip it every time. Every every frame I go true, false, true, false, true, false. The um draw trigger will just by doing that. I think that's a cool little trick. No if statement. Though. It's just making it. It's just flipping the, the boolean back and forth. It's cool. You can do that in an update loop, right? And make something run every other frame. So if it's true, then run. If it's false, don't run. And so now you got something that's running half the amount of frames, and you can make your code even better, or more optimized. I think it's a cool little trick with a question mark. I mean, a exclamation point. I don't know why I always call. I know they're called exclamation points, but when I'm talking, I always call them question marks for some reason. Stupid me. Alright, where was I? Anywhere? I'm going to have to go for a five minute break and pee. All this stuff works. If you guys want this code, this code, I'll just um, drag it into Discord. And if you don't have my Discord, there you go. Um, so I know I'm setting it twice here. Here I'm setting Sphere Collider to here. I'm setting I'm setting the reference, even though they're the same reference. And the reason I'm doing that is so because this code will be deleted in a build. So in your game, you really need to make sure you. On start, you get your component and you do the collider. Now we have a reference to that collider, and like I was saying before, that trigger, trigger, is trigger. We want to make sure that's true. Before I did it a little bit differently. I just did all in one line. I did get component is trigger equals true, but I wasn't assigning it yet. Now that it's assigned, I don't even I don't ever have to. Uh, Worry about it. So I'll always have a reference here. So now I can do anything I want with Sphere Collider here, you know, or anywhere else in the script. So that's it. Our trigger's done. Um, I guess now it just comes to a point we need to come up with our logic of how we want to control what happens when the player comes in there. Um, we can either, I mean, I'm right here, we already have a reference to the player. This word other is, is going to be our player. So we can do something with that. We can get the player's position. We can do something. Now, on trigger enter, just enters once. It's just a trigger. So if you say trigger, move to this point with this much speed or something like that. It can't because it goes, it starts to move and that's it. It, it. it got one frame of movement. Movement and stuff needs to be done in an update loop. You know, smooth moving along over time. Um, if you're moving with your mouse, you're going to hold down. If you're moving with mouse or keyboard, you know, if you're holding down the, the Wasad keys, you're written down one of them, it's going to be a, a, a one. If you're not, it's going to be a zero. So you're going to add one over time to his movement or you're not. So we need to figure that out. Alright, I'm just going to take a quick break and um, you guys can ask more questions if, on what we've done already. If you want, I'll bring up the code so you can just see it on screen. In fact, I'll put it in Discord right now. You can just have a copy of it in case we change it and we lose it. It should work right now. You can just drag and drop this onto a game object that has a sphere collider. Before I go, I'll make this. If I do the square brackets up there and I go component, there's got to be some component 
Oh, no, no, no. Require. Put the word require. Require component. What type of component is it? Type of sphere collider. Okay. Now the script will automatically do its thing. We're going to save it. We'll go back to Unity. So do you add void update? Yes, you would add void update with a capital U. And I guess what I wanted to get part of what, what I'm going over today is we got game objects and we got Lego, Legos, you know. Are you going to have your trigger Lego be the one to control your player's movement? Or the evil box control it? Or do you want the player to control his movement? Who, who's going to be controlling the movement? You know, you, you almost don't want the trigger to do it. The trigger doesn't shouldn't care. He's just saying, yeah, the player came here. Yeah, the player's not here. That's all it does. You can leave that code and move on. All, so we just go... So with the, in the player, we should do something. We should make another script, like the player movement script. It's like, is the player in the trigger? Yes or no? If it is, well, let's do this. We can, we can do that in an update loop. When the trigger is... Is just going to be sitting there doing nothing, you know. Um, let me. Um, show in Explorer. Player trigger. I don't have Discord on. Jupa John. There, I just uploaded the, um, I'll just drag that into Discord if you want a copy of it for yourself, or a reference, you know, just, I love having references that just work in the most simple, basic way. Alright, 12.46 right now for me, I'll be back at 1 o'clock, let's see, put a timer on. So we got the countdown hype working. Cool. Well, Galactic, I really hope I've um, I've shed some light a little bit on some things, and each step will get better. And Mr. Snow, I really hope I can get to some um, to mouse stuff or keyboard movement and mouse movement. Um, I think that might be almost next. So we're gonna do the player. I might just add some movement to the player, so I don't have to drag it in the. I don't have to drag it around in the scene anymore. I should just be able to do that. Another way. Um, so I'll see you guys in a little while. How come I don't the um the red thing is not on there? make it public and then I can see it. No, I hate, can't leave a script not working. I mean, it's definitely, it's definitely no. It's trying to get this, and it's still no. That's not gonna do it. That makes no sense at all.
worked that way, but it didn't work that way. I'm not quite sure why. Yeah, I'm just leaving it that way. Makes no sense. This is Squatters and all. There it is. And it's sitting there returning and returning and it's saying it's going it won't it won't ever assign it. Oh I never assign it. What an idiot. I've peace so bad. I've got brain freeze. Okay. Now it'll work. I was just getting the component. I was, what, what an idiot. There. Now, now it automatically assigns in editor. Yeah, cool. That's what I wanted. Okay. And then I'll hide that, trial trigger. Beautiful. And I'm going to add that back, the required component. Because that's it. You, you should. Done. Retest. No different. And if I try to delete this, remove component, can't remove it because it depends on it. And if I delete, remove component, remove component. If I add a player trigger, it'll automatically add the sphere collider for me. And that's what um that's what adding this attribute up here does. Attribute. Alright, that's good for break. I'll leave that there. Um, a copy of that's in, in Discord. If yours doesn't work, it's because of this. <laughs> but if you've been following along, that's not a big deal. All right, let's see. See you guys in a little
Vandy. How you going? I see ya. Can't open this big bag of candy. <laughs> Speaking of which, I bought two big bags last night. M&M's, peanut M&M's giant bag was on special, and so was, uh, what else did I get? Got something for Kendra. Sour Patch Kids. <laughs> I'm doing good, I'm doing good. <laughs> That's totally true. Honey Bunny's my girlfriend, if you guys didn't know. And we're trying to think of a better name for her, like Skyway Interactive 2, or something a little bit more professional. We haven't come up with a great idea yet. No pet names. That's all I reckon. <laughs> I'll get a double pack of M&M's today. Mm, yeah, M&M's are one of my things. I go, I always end up going back and forth, and the peanut and the and regular too. Like I love them both. I could do. I'll go through like oh six months. Well, this that's all I want is regular, and then I won't have none for a year, and then like six months later, I just want peanuts or or just stages, not necessarily six months. <laughs> so what we've been doing so far, we've just kind of um, uh, Galactic Vienna and a few other people in Discord have been trying to get their head around different coding up different you know elements and in, in Unity and and I just felt like really what was missing was the there was a few just like those core elements that needed to be. I wanted to show a bunch of little tricks in Unity and how to write basic code properly and just get your head around it. Because once you get your head around it and you have an understanding at the basic level, you can kind of do anything you want in Unity. It's just kind of learning the wording of component, transform, game object, uh, and stuff like that. They're all just accessible and easy to use and work so goddamn well. Almost everything is pretty intuitive most of the time. I mean, there's it, it's it's hard and it's complex and it's crazy and who knows how it'll all end up going in the end. But I think I want to show some um, best practices of just prototyping, making your code just really simple. Lady Skyway, that's pretty good. There's a T minus going still, yes. Thanks, man. I, I get, you have so many things to turn on and off. That's why I'm just gonna make another um, another scene on OBS just for the um, so I don't have like obviously other people do. I have my entry scene, but I have to pay it in all nice. <laughs> But I gotta get my. Uh, I gotta get another. I gotta get a uh, BRB stream. You think I should be more working my overlay? I can do that. I'll show you how I do that. What do I do all the way? I think I can do that. I think I don't have my overlay ready. I've been oh, I've been wanting to make because I've been wanting to make an, an a game, but you know it's like I've got so many other projects. I've got work now. I've got my project that's gonna take years. It's like I don't feel like getting sidetracked sometimes into overlays. You know I'm not gonna put it on anyway. Where is it? It's here. I'm gonna look in the. It's called like Twitch Chat Supreme or something. I've made a whole bunch of cool uh, overlays. I don't know which one I I use anymore, honestly. I have them ready to go. Yeah, 
There's that one. Then I'll have to um, resize my. Oh, that's not too bad. I can just move that up to there. So this is one of the overlays I made in Unity. That way I got little sparkles going on it. But then I've got to do something else. But I gotta do I gotta do something else to make it um, see through, which is. Lord, cannot find not that. Oh, that's it. This has to be it. Yeah, so now I can just line my video up. Oh, it's actually easy to do today. That'll work, and then line that up. And that's there. There you go, Vandy. That's about the, the far as I've gotten on my... Um, There we go. I've got um, I've got the color of the outline changing with um, date time now milliseconds. I use that variable to change and lerp the time, so I could have multiple elements and multiple programs running, and they'd all be synced in in the color as long as I had my my color lerping function the same. Because the value would always be um, with date time now. It was a cool thing that I figured out. There we go. Hopefully, I won't take too much away from the Unity part. Let's see if it does. Yeah, I told you how I got some overlays. Oh, what what I've been thinking about for a game is like, like when someone comes in, you know, instead of collecting points like Revo does, Revo bot. And stuff like that, you're gonna get, um, you'll get like fuel for your missile <laughs> or explosive power for your missile, and maybe like right by the, um, here I'll put my mouse there, like right here, kind of like on this side, you'll have um, some missiles with your name on it. And they'll like, you can't fire them all the time, but over time they'll, you'll, they'll get ready. And as more time goes on, like you can, you can, um, It'll kind of power itself up, and then when you want to in chat, you can fire it, and you can try to get more points, or maybe destroy someone else's points or something like that. I think it'd be great. So you just got like little missile. That way, the chat's not too crazy. Because some games, you know, you, chat games are just like totally insane. You know, like they just um, they just go off. You know, you, you it's not even it's not even good to have on your channel because it's it's just insane. No one can talk, but I think that'd be a good one. Um, just when you come in, first time you talk, it'll load your missile, or you, maybe you have to come in and say missile load or something like that, and then um, it'll sit there and just kind of gain its. It'll have like maybe a, maybe a loading time or something like that, or you give it some values of. Maybe fuel. <laughs> yeah, fuel might be good because the longer that way it can like stay out longer and try to hit things, and maybe it'll it'll try to hit hit other players. I think that's great. Or maybe just it'll maybe hit power ups of some kind. There'll be like some power ups on the screen just randomly, and if it happens to hit them, some will be pluses for you, but if, some might be negatives for other players. Whoever's well uh, versus playing the missile game, you know what I mean? I think that might be cool. I'll make it too harsh on it so people can't get picked on, but who knows? That might be fun, something like that. Yeah, Flood and Chat gets crazy with just some games. You've got to have it uh, give you limited things like fire and 
load or something like that, you know? And that's about all you can do. But I think, like, like the more you chat or the more certain things happen, or uh, just do it by points, you know? And I can always give out points to other people. The mods can. So it's cool. But if you, uh, just something, just something semi-interactive. Not to take, not to take away from the the stream, but to add more to it on top of it, like just to keep the mind busy, you know. Unless your phone's in your hand and you're playing Candy Crush. <laughs> Interested. Okay. Where were we? Oh, so what we were doing in the beginning was making and going over scripting best practices and all that stuff. And then we moved on to making a trigger. Tweet. You can draw the trigger as well. We did on gizmos draw function that's also in the mono behavior. That's cool. You can hide the sphere colliders like that, and every sphere collider in the entire your entire project will also do the same thing. So if you don't want to see them, because if you're drawing them already, sometimes you don't want to draw it again. And the same thing on Gizmo's draw, the behavior is if you close this, it'll it it's stopping the Gizmo. You just made a Gizmo, a little red a little red wire sphere. That's how this would this would be the same thing in a gizmo, and that code's not included in your build, which is kind of cool. Like it doesn't clog up your build, so like I say, don't worry about so much optimizing there. But instead of completely not optimizing, I at least shows you one optimization that you can do instead of running this git component every time, every frame you can put that git component right here um, what we're gonna do is just make sure if sphere collider is no we assign that sphere collider to this return again and then try again and this time it, the sphere collider should not be null right we just assigned it and it's basically just gonna run through no not null not null and it's gonna use that and it's and it's totally working fine the main point is, is just getting a reference, and it's only getting it once. It only has to get it once. This is getting the reference here. When I say, hey, it's getting the reference, that's that's getting the reference. The get, get that component reference sphere collider, and it's on our game object. It's on our transform. The script is so we don't have to say. You can't say transform. This this is just what we were covering, you know. You can't say transform get component. It's the same thing. It's transform means this transform. This transform right here. My mouse is hovering over. And I'm on player trigger. That's this component. Alright, player trigger. So if I say player trigger transform, transform, yeah. Get component, sphere collider. I don't need to do that. I can just say get sphere collider. <laughs> I could also say player trigger transform game object which is actually this think of that as game object I think of this as transform and all the components this to me is game object like the little thing here I don't know why in my mind because when you wanna when you wanna deactivate a game object you have to do it here this is game object set active and this is enabled equals true and false there is no set active here. So that's just so you know that. There's just more terminology. This is what I wanted to go over. This little this basic terminology. Terminology. It's because it's another language. So what I'm saying is you don't have to put this transform here, right? You do have to put position. This position doesn't know anything, you know, but you do have to put transform up position because that's what I want. I want a position. It's a vector three. But here, 
transfer get component, you know, we can always call get component from anything. That's what's kind of kind of nice. Um, if you have another game object you're referencing in some other script, you can put that other game object reference here, and you can tell him to game. You know, he, he can be referencing another script to get their components. It doesn't have to be. This get component is also, also obviously relative to just this game object. Okay, end of that one. End of that part. You can also say this <laughs> game object dot transform dot game object game object dot well I can't do two dots you, you, it is what I'm saying I just want you to make sure there's so many ways to reference it but it's understanding in your head all what you need to do just thinking about it clearly stepping back going <laughs> instead of just tr keep trying stuff and trying stuff you know it's it's better to spend time five minutes in the bathroom or the shower or wherever, away from coding some just to get your head around it, like, because it's not that hard. It's just Lego pieces. Just, oh, I want you to keep telling yourself that. It's this Lego piece, and I'm going to give it some behavior, and it's this Lego piece's behavior. It's up to you of how to organize that, you know? And that's what we're going to move, that's where our next part is at. That's where our next step is at. <laughs> this... <laughs> So here's here's what this code says. This transform game object get component sphere collect. So player trigger. This <laughs> I just want to make sure this is clear. This means the player trigger. This is player trigger. So this also includes all those things that this has, <laughs> which is player trigger. This game object, right? This thing here. Oh, I should. I wish that would stay up on top. Um, this game object. No, sorry. This transform game object get component sphere collider. It's the same thing, but I got to get there a long ways, don't I? But you, you, you get the point. Mono behavior. Just get component. Right. I mean that's obviously better than what I was doing before. But here I'm only gonna do that get component even once. I'm actually making actually have a reference. It's almost like I made another sphere collider here. But it's empty. It's just got a little slot ready to go for a sphere collider, ready to go. It's it is private by default. Um it's gonna say, hey, I don't need to put it's redundant putting private because it's already private. So there you go, okay? And you can name that anything you want to remember itself. Like if you want it to be the player trigger collider or something, just to make sure that you don't, you know what it is. So our next step, what our next step will be before I look back at the chat, is it protect? No, it's, I think it's. Oh, well, thank you, Vandy, um, for saying that was protected by default. I will, I'll look into that or send me a link because I don't want to look at that right now. Yeah, you, all of Andy's comments are completely true. And oh, the enabled part, yeah. So you can do exactly. You can do um, sphere collider. You know, there is you probably can't do dot enabled. Hey, you can enabled. So you can do, and that's just you set that to either true or false, right? And that's per component, and that is that. That is referring to this toggle button here. If I say true or false, that will change that toggle. That's how you change it by code. And if I say um, Sphere Collider, the game object, I can't do that. It, is, it doesn't allow me to do true because there's a separate function for that. It's kind of nice. So you can just go dot. It's set active is the one you want to use. And then you can just put in true. So they're using a method to set it all up. But I, I don't know. It, it doesn't matter. But that way you know that is the difference. And then obviously you can do false as well. It doesn't matter. It's a boolean. It takes either either one. And then um, because our script, this sphere collider, this game object is the same as, as this player trigger script. 
we don't actually need that. It doesn't matter. It's a double, you know what I mean? We can still use this game object set after false if you wanted to. Well, if you're here, you can't say set active is false. You can say enabled equals false. So that would turn this off. If on start, like enabled would go and turn off your script right away. <laughs> and then nothing would run. But sometimes um, that's a trick you do or a thing you do on start. So you set all your variables up like in awake. Awake runs just before um, start does. And it runs only once as well. So awake, you can set up a whole bunch. Of, I like to set my variables up in here. Or in start, I do. Depending on on reasons why. I don't to go into that now. but um, <clears throat> And then actually do enable it to false. And then it's just sitting there. It's like you've loaded the script up. You've loaded your variables. Maybe you've looked in the scene to grab all your game objects that you needed to. Like when you do things on start and awake, you, you don't want it to be extremely heavy, but that's where you're doing a lot of your um, setting up and your initializing or whatever they call it. You know, it's just you're setting up. You're like, I need all these things in my game. I need to make sure my glider is true. I need to make sure I have all my references, like my reference to the collider and stuff like that. And then sometimes you'll just turn it off because you don't need it. It's not part of the game right at that point, you know what I mean? And then you have like maybe a manager script that turns it on later for whatever reason, just because you get close to it or or whatever. But it's there loaded, you know, it's kind of like that's kind of that some people do that or I'm going to do that. And it's, it's, it's just something you can or cannot do. It's just a, another um, trick or tool. Let us go to chill. Just give me a second here. Now, I really want to know about that um, that protected thing. I swear it was private. I could have swore it was private. But, what do I know? There's so much to know, so much to learn <laughs> in game devs. Okay, so I'll get rid of Awake. That was just showing that. That would run. If I did, you can put code in Awake as well. It'll run just before Start does. And um, for reference, there's also another page. God, I'm like hiccups, got chills. Oh, what's going on? I was drinking water. That's why it wasn't coffee. Uh, um, what was I gonna do next? I had a great idea next to do, and I can't think of what I was gonna do. So that all is just done. Like we only have two variables. We have a whole script. Just draw a trigger or not? That's kind of what we do. I do like this for gizmos only. Just something like myself. Okay. Yeah, Vandy's a great source of um, Unity knowledge. He's his game is freaking awesome, complicated, crazy. He's in a, he's in a world of shit just like me. <laughs> we we definitely work on a lot of same 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 things, and then uh, as well we work on all totally different things. And the game development is just so huge. So it's great having you around, Vandy. Man, I think. One time I was coding something up and I think you saved me like freaking hours. Just like, no, just reference that. Oh, yeah. 
and sub referencing things, doing like this dot transform dot game object or you know like it was that that equivalent of that of that encoding. All right, next part what we're gonna do. I I, I was just almost I felt like I said I was what I wanted to do next, and then I kind of forgot what. It's more about the code interaction is what I wanted to show next. And I was thinking about it. So what galactic tell me if I'm right. So we're gonna make this cube move toward the player when he is inside of the trigger. Is that what we're gonna do? And when the player leaves the trigger, it stops. Is that what we were going to do? You kind of made me realize you need a you know, major refactor. <laughs> yeah, it's, almost, it's hard to do that sometimes. It's... It's good, but if I gave you that feeling, that's good because it makes you, it's making you rethink and cleaner, tighter of a componentry, and it's the only way. It's the only way to get through it, man. Like, there's just so much. I feel like I have a simple game, you know? And it's, you know, you have like four or five mechanics, and all of a sudden it just seems like it becomes a thousand times more complicated. But it's, isn't it? It's just all tiny little things. Like rigid body, we don't care about. We know how to interact with it and we know what we do and what its limits and whatever it is. And you can do a lot by checking one or two of these little boxes. You know what I mean? And that's why I try to set my scripts up, the biggest ones, like this or however each little component is. That's how I try to look at it. I got a yes from Galactic. Okay, cool. Okay, so if then I just wanted to make sure I was on the right thinking. So here's what I'm thinking, right? <laughs> the player doesn't care about the cube. The player doesn't care about the trigger. No code needs to go on the player. All we know, all we all we care about on the player itself was that it had a tag player. I mean, there's nothing here, right? rigid body as well. But that's probably later so we can move it. Oh, that's what I was going to do too. Um, I don't know if Snow's still around, but if he is, I'll do the, um, I'll do some inputs for him. But I'll wait if otherwise. I'll just move it in the editor. <coughs> um, the trigger, we called it a player trigger. Because we're actually detecting the player came in or out, right? But really, I was thinking that I'm thinking that the evil cube, I mean, look how evil it's looking. That's really the behavior that we want to be playing with. The evil cube is going to say, it's just basically going to look at the trigger and say, hey, are we, is the player there or not? And then, you know, where's the, where's the player and let's go towards him. Otherwise, we're not going to do anything, basically. Although, we'll just basically shut down. Or we can go to another, a new spot, then shut down or something like that. And so... If this trigger's only use is for that, it's really, it doesn't, it doesn't care if this gets triggered into it. I'm just thinking, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to even going through my own thought process as far as like how to think an object oriented, product in, how to think in object oriented programming. Think in objects. Don't make it, don't think like a computer scientist. 
<laughs> it can it can destroy your whole creative thing. When you think it through like it is in real life, then it then it's different. It's almost like what I, I think what I'm feeling like this shouldn't even be called the player trigger. It should be called the evil the evil cube evil cube zone. You know? Here's what I mean. I want I want an evil cube zone. I don't want a player trigger. Control A, control copy. Control A. Control paste. Evil cube zone. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. I'm gonna save that. No, it's not that I just renamed it. Remove component, remove component. But out of the way, right? You can also just take your script and drag and drop it underneath this add component button. And it's going to automatically add our sphere collider. It's going to automatically. Kusha! Welcome, mate. Well, thanks for joining the stream. And then we got our draw trigger as well. In case we're not looking at the thing. In case we're at the player, we can still see our our thing. Welcome, Kulishov. Welcome, man. Where are you from? Tell me about yourself. I can remember you forever then. I'll forget your name in a, in a, like six hours, or maybe, or six to sixty hours. But if you tell me where you're from and what you do, I'll probably remember you forever. And how you going? Okay, so what we're gonna do next? So we got no scripts. We got no scripts in the game. I just made a new one. It was just basically a copy of the last one, <laughs> and I named it Evil Cube Zone. So right, if the player comes into this Evil Cube Zone, this Evil Cube is gonna Evil Cube is up his ass up. Okay, so obviously we want to draw the trigger and stuff like draw. Uh, you can either put it on top or the bottom. I don't know. It never goes in the middle of your stuff. Um, I'm gonna cut this out. I'll put this up on top. Control on S. And I'm just gonna restart Visual Studio because I made a script outside of Visual Studio, right? I put a new uh, put a new script here. Um, and just made when I made these new scripts. <coughs> well. Visual Studio doesn't always um, catch that and has an issue, and then all your um, extensions don't load properly. And what was going on was all my highlighting and syntax was half gone. And the way around that is you want to make your uh, make a new script in Visual Studio. And you just right click on the Assets folder and just say New Class and just name it. It's just as easy. It's in the Solution Explorer. It's easy on the side here. Solution Explorer. And there's a little button right here. Sync with Active Document. And you just click that. And it will automatically take you. So I'm on Player Trigger. Or I'm on Evil Cube Zone. I'll stop that. Go back. My fault. I double clicked it. You just, what did I just do? Uh, 
You know, you can do all sorts of stuff. You can like put them, put two scripts up at once and stuff too. Sometimes you can put them on the bottom. Depends what, um, what if you what add-ons you have and what day it is and like like what lunar cycle. Like I don't know. Some of those things work some days and don't others. Jeremy, I want you to be here. What's about here? Is this I gotta put here? Oh yeah, dock it. In the middle one, right? Yeah. Sorry, that was me not knowing how to do it. Just learn. Alright, we're good now. Sorry for that. So player trigger was exactly the same as Evil Cube Zone, but I'm renaming it. I'm leaving player trigger. It's now obsolete. I'm going to evil cube zone because really we want we want to have this cube. That's that's what we're controlling with this trigger, right? So let's make this thing like the thing we're doing. So um, all we either all we need is really the transform. We can get the game object or the transform. But if we do public, um, we'll just do game object for now. It's just as easy. Evil cube. Alright. If we make it public, we can just drag and drop it in at this point. And I think that's a good and easy way to do it. So on the trigger, we've got an evil cube area now for game objects, you know. We'll say, oh yeah, we can do the evil cube. We could also, you know, there's other ways to get it, to reference it, but let's just, for fun, we'll just do that for now. Now, now I'm in my head, I'm thinking, do I should we put the movement of what we want him to do, though, actually on the evil cube? So... This script just says evil cube, all right, chase. Evil cube, don't you know? Follow or don't follow. Just one boolean that it turns on and off. That's all this does. And later on, you can make this a list of just you know a hundred evil cubes, and and you're just sending a boolean or just checking one boolean. When I say that, it's because checking like. Dude, seriously, you go ahead and run a for loop and, and check a thousand booleans and see how long it takes your computer to do. And you'll see what I mean. Don't be don't don't be shy to use a, use a hundred <laughs> in your whole game or more instead of doing you know instead of doing lots of other things. And in the update loop is what I'm saying. It's not that big of a deal. It's not that heavy. We don't do git component in the update loop. Um, so that might be alright. I might put another script on here so that makes more sense. Because especially for upgrading later, you're like, okay, this thing's not moving fast enough. I want it to move faster. You wouldn't want to do that here in the evil cube zone. So this is just the evil cube zone. And here we'll actually put make it an evil, the evil cube's movement. Alright. I feel like I'm developing a new game. It's just three pieces, but I'm just doing it in a really slow, methodical, thought-out way, so you can see. I mean, we could do this with one script and not have them attached to anything, and have them all drag them in, and we can do it and figure out all the all the code we want to and everything like that. But doing it this way, it's it's Legos, right? It's, we've got three objects, and we're giving them behavior, and I'll sh and as it comes together, you really see. How you can upgrade it so easily. So I'm gonna get just close player trigger because I don't I'm not gonna use it. I'll pin this thing. Solution Explorer um, assets. I'm gonna right click add class and do a C sharp mono behavior and I'm gonna call this evil cube movement. <clears throat> All right, 
So we're gonna move towards the player. We want a reference to the player. We can send that over. So we can have it private. We don't need to have it public. But I'll I'll do I like to do things public as I'm prototyping because you just you just looking around and you don't have to worry about that. Um public game object player. And Vandy's gonna tell me some type of optimization thing I shouldn't do or should should or shouldn't do, but and I'd agreed with them probably one hundred percent. But what our focus is gonna be is totally just is not that yet. You know, and we're not that the optimization and understanding that because that that's almost irrelevant when you see the pattern of building it more mechanically as objects, as Lego pieces with Componentry on them and behaviors on them, you know, it takes away this Underlying deep and that's something else that I've lost words to say right now Public game object player. We need a player We'll move toward this All right and we're going to add this to the cube, so everything we talk about. So transform is going to be of the cube. So start, we need to do anything at start? No. I think what my idea was just to have a public Boolean called, um, what should we call it, like can follow or Yeah, that's fine with me. Can follow. Okay. And there'll be something in here like if can follow. Oops, if, if. If can follow. We're going to do something. All right. We'll figure that out in a second. Pin that one, save it. Um, so all we're here, we're doing is drawing something. Because that's for gizmos only. I'll just stick it down here with the gizmos. And we can also surround it with a region. Um, I usually just select the area I want us to do and then surround with region to say gizmos boom and then I don't have to worry about that in the code because I mean just as we're we're building we just keep it clean Make sure our trigger is that's false. Another couple things I want to do for our our sphere is just give it a default value on start, just in case something's got messed up. We'll just say it equals five. All right, here's where I think all we needed to do is so in the code, I'm gonna have the evil cube. Let me go put the scripts back on there and then I'll come back here because I don't want to get too far out. Even if you're following me totally 100%, I'm just gonna make sure everything's right. So I've made that new script, it's down here now and Visual Studio didn't give me an issue, Just when you make new scripts in Visual, oh, I can turn that thing on. <coughs> I've been not doing those. I, I don't have enough RAM to do all this stuff economically. There's too many overlays. Um, so Evil Cube's gonna get Evil Cube movement, is it not? You can even drag it right to the Evil Cube, or you can drag it under the Add Component. 
drag it here. Same thing, right? You look to movement and the trigger. Oh, it's looking for an evil cube. That's right, I signed that already. Same one. This way we don't have to go find it or nothing. We'll stick this. Call this the evil trigger now because this is really triggers and colliders, rigid bodies, and stuff like that. You do not want to have them like underneath other parents of things that would move at top. Always try to keep them at the top level. Um, like, and if you have a rigid body, you can't put another rigid body underneath it unless you're doing a joint. You have to set the joints up properly, just so you know. Like, I would never put the cube and the trigger together in any form. Which should make sense, right? In real life, you, they'd be totally separate, like Lego pieces. We made an invisible trigger game object. Just put some code on it to control the cube. The cube is going to have some movement. Just go and see how fast it goes. And it's got a can follow toggle. We can also have it public and so we can turn this on and off without having to worry about the trigger. It's probably like half of half of this I think I'm showing you a little, a little bit of um, some debugging tricks and how to code faster and not code faster, how to develop faster. You know, more and more cleaner. Um, the in region of the text. Yeah, you want to avoid finding that's expensive. Yeah, that's one of the most expensive things. Something we can do if you gotta do it once, like, like you say though. Um, the end of the region. So all you need to do is make a region and say end region. Um, it's an octo. Is it? I'm sorry. Is it too small? You can also put the same word there. In region gizmos. Because I had that word. And what's cool about regions is say, you can do spaces and stuff. My awesome. Uh, that's just gay doing that. Um, red wire sphere. You say like you want to be more descriptive. So when you close it, you just kind of know in your code. You're like, oh, that's you know, I don't have to worry about that. My my code has nothing to do with that. It's just looking. It's just. You know, you know what it does. It's just giving a color and a radius, and we put a bunch of checks in there so it didn't get null references and exceptions in the editor. You know, <laughs> I'll give you this code all at the end, dude. All you guys in the in the Discord, if you want, which um, probably haven't posted that in a while. I'll throw that. I'll throw that in the Discord. Oh wait, that's not the thing to put it on over here. That ain't it either. I just put copy paste and it was like pasted in a whole bunch of code from <laughs> like that whole script. <laughs> Sideways. I need a side question. What is a proper data type to save a 2D grid? Like a, like an infinite XY spreadsheet. A two D grid. Just not like a vector two? I mean I mean like is that not what you're saying? Or you and then do a list of vector twos? Like something like that? Is that weird? Is that is this? I mean, is that the direction you're talking? I don't, I'm not quite clear. Please expand. Okay, okay, okay. So that was just our region and how to do regions. That's all you gotta do for C in C sharp. Is just that hashtag region, hashtag in region, and name your region something. That's all you gotta do. It will not be included in your code either. It it comes out during compile time or whatever time. Okay. 
start we set up our variables just to set I'm just gonna write that up here you know set set some actually you know what I usually say <laughs> ensure defaults <laughs> you know like as trigger is true like not having that on all of a sudden it doesn't work like like going in and chasing it just doing that line of code the extra bit you know you have a reference you know you got you can do things to it as well it's almost like insurance all right, we close that. So, so what happens is the player comes in. We know this works. It prints the player's name only when the player comes in. So we do something silly, stupid like um, evil cube. So we got the reference right. We've already assigned it. Just dragged and dropped it over here. And the only thing I made public was that boolean. Um. Oh, but you know what? The evil cube in this instance, right, is a game object. <coughs> so I can either. So I, well, I want to. What I want to get is that movement script of it. I want to tell the movement script, "Hey, you can go ahead and follow now. Can follow is true. That's what I want to do. I want to say evil cube dot can follow." equals true okay that's what I want to say and then I want to say down here I'm gonna copy that obviously I want to say this paste um, false this is on exit once we've exited we want to the evil cube we want well, we can't do that obviously because I I'm saying game object evil cube is a game object obviously you can I can do like Game object transform. I can get the transform. I don't want to do that either. I want can follow. How do I get from here to the to the real that part where can follow is? And that's always a that's always a question. Well, we already had all the tools, and that was just like get component. You could that's this is one way. I'm gonna do it a different way first. So this is this is. This is the easiest way to think, I think, through, and I know it's the wrong way as well. Okay, but follow me through. So that you understand the referencing. So get component. And I know it was the evil cube movement. That's the actual thing that we wanted. That's what has can follow in it, is the evil cube mo movement. We haven't made a reference to this thing yet, let alone getting the can follow from it, and then let alone trying to set it. Uh, well, but we know that'll be right. This will work. That is without a doubt. And you know what? For the scope of this, the performance will not even in a even in a triple A game. This would not be that big of a performance issue. Unless you had hundreds of cubes and hundreds of triggers, this only fires once. Only when you enter. That's it. it. Doesn't do anything else. It just sits here. This code doesn't just sit here and just tick over hundreds of times, you know. And even if it did, even if a hundred things came in there, it's only gonna run if it's the player that went in there anyway. So what I'm saying is that, yeah, this is gonna go. It's gonna, it's gonna do that every time. So you can change that reference really earlier and make it easier on yourself as well you can just do like this copy evil cube movement right I want instead of a game object you can just do evil cube movement you've made that now that's what you want you know this evil cube movement it's gonna have to have that's this script it's gonna mono behavior it'll have a game object this thing's got reference to the player even too, so you can do things with that. It's kind of cool. So we can get rid of that whole thing now. We don't have to get the component from it. We just assigned, instead of doing the game object, we just kind of took, we just did this once kind of uh, as a trick up there. So now that works. There's no errors. And there's no errors down here. That's not red anymore. And I just all I did is I changed that word from game object 
to evil cube movement. Right? Did that make sense? Did I lose anybody? Okay. Let's test it. There's no movement yet, but we got can follow. We should be able to see if that moves. And what I can do, I want to look at more than one thing. I can just come up to this little lock bar and lock the inspector. So now when I click on something else, say like the player, and I move the player, you notice the transform's not moving. It's actually still the evil cube thing. It won't. It's been locked. And then we can also add another inspector and bring that skinny side by side. <laughs> so on the right, I'll keep the cube. All right, these are identical right now, but I've locked the right one and the left one. Um, I'll just have it so I can move around. Now, back to our evil trigger, the evil cube zone, I should say. We changed that reference. Evil cube used to be a game object. Now it's uh, um, it's looking for an evil evil cube mov movement. Well, you know that's that's here on our evil cube, which is also sitting right here. There's only one of them in the scene. Look, it's gonna it's gonna find it if you click on that little finder button, too. If you only had one, It'd be hundreds. But it makes your life easy. You can you can assign it that way. You can assign it by dragging and dropping the game object. That's what's so cool. The game object will work too, right? Delete it. Still, that component's on there. You put transform. You can put anything as long as, as long as it's here. Now we have a reference to the cube in the evil cube zone. The cube's gonna know where the player's at. All right. Um, evil cube. He needs to know where the player's at. Here's the player. So you don't get a temper. The player has no scripts on it. The player doesn't do nothing. We just have one little tiny script on the trigger and one on the cube. So behavior. Trigger behavior and, and evil cube behavior. So our trigger still working. Okay. Unity does a get component evil cube mo movement in the back for you. That's right. Oh, I'm so glad you said that, Galactic. Uh, I didn't want my my time spent on deaf ears. Sometimes it's slow, but it's I am I am being slow and redundant. But I needed that when I from like day one. It's like I feel like I I could go so much faster if I would have had the um certain things told to me from day one. But they just, I don't know. It's like I missed that day in the class or something. <laughs> We're almost there though. I can hit play, right? I signed all my variables. Yeah. Let's go over here. Grab the player. And go in, out. Look at that. Can you see the evil cube movement script toggle? And it's sexy. Beautifully. That's what we want. That's what we want is these tiny little machines. And that's kind of like, I swear, that this is how like games are built. It's just that little tiny bit. And then you just build, 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 polish each little tiny system on top. Can follow. Oh, we want to do something when you can follow, huh? We know can follow works. We, this is working perfect. We already have an, we even know where the player's at. Um, we probably want to do a couple of things to look at the player. So we got a, we got a reference to the player, and we got a reference to the ourselves because we're the cube, All right? So what 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 do we want to do to move there? What kind of movement? We're using that vector three move towards. 
I've never used that. I'm trying to start to think really quick. So we can just do, we can just get a vector to the player. Turn ourselves to look at that and move forward. How about that? So we'll just make it work, and then we can worry about optimization and anything like that later. Or we'll talk about why we would change something, because I think that's the best too. Um, if so, if I can follow, I want to. Um, I want to look at the player. So how am I going to get the player? I want to get a vector three. Um, I want, this is the direction to the player. Is equal to um, the target's going to be the player. So it's transform position. This is my position. This is the cube's position. Minus the player, which is what? What's the player? Player is a game object in this content, right? I could just put transform there to make my life easier. Because I don't really. But it doesn't matter, I can just do dot transform. If you have a transform or a game object, it doesn't matter. You can kind of go back and forth easy. If you got a transform, you can say dot game object. If you got a game object like player, you can say dot transform. Depending on which one you want to use for whatever reason. That's just how you get around. It makes it easy. Because I can go back to it, right? I can say game object again. <laughs> um, and we want its position as well, right? So that gave us a vector. And the only thing I ever do wrong is I swap these two terms around. I do it all the time. But basically, it's an arrow. Like, this is the tail, and this is the arrow. And in the end, now we have a direction vector. This is not like a point vector, like just a place in space anymore. Like a X, Y, Z coordinates. It's, it's a, it actually has, it's like a direction thing. So we're going to use that. Um, we're also going to need something else. Hell, I play Unity videos at 0.25 speed. A <laughs> little slow. <laughs> I ended up just having to I just ended up watching it and pausing it or watching it a hundred times <laughs> that is one of the this is this is this little piece right here is just gold you're gonna use it a thousand times in game dev you're never gonna stop using it that's it you you have to that's vector math you'll see it a billion times you want a vector from where you're at to where something else is at. Now I can do, whoops, I can do um, some really cool stuff with transform. So the cubes transform, right? Because we're the evil cube and we're, we're talking about its movement. And that's why usually you do all your transform movements there. And the transform has all these really cool things. I wish I could show you all the things in one page you can do with them. But I believe there's a look. There's a rotate. There's a look at. And there's three overloads for it, meaning there's three different versions of the same look at. You can put in a, a transform with a world up that you'd like. You can put in just a world position. Or you can put a world position with also a vector three world up. Because you can have vector, your world up could be any direction you want. You can also have it change over time. You know, if you wanted, they'll assume that you have y up with the position one. You can say look at position. That's just the easiest one to get, right? Or we could do transform target. It makes no difference because it's probably going to get target and then change it to dot position. whatever we want um but we want to look at the player 
basically, right? So we just put the player in there. And we want to look at the player's transform. For this one, it looks it wants to transform. And that will totally do. There's other ways to do it. But that's kinda that's kinda nice to read though, isn't it? <laughs> player look at transform, look at the player transform. It's it just kinda makes sense. Then there's this one, transform.translate. It's great for moving things that are not rigid bodies. Um, you can even move them for rigid bodies. I think they need to be just not. They have to be is kinematic. They can't be that can't be unchecked. It doesn't work well with physics. You said that third one looks like the right one. I'll see what the third one does again. It might not come up until I empty it. World position, world up. Oh, you could do that. You, you're, you're totally right. You could do either one. Any, any one you wanted. Oh, there. Now it came up. Um. And what's funny is because what I had before with um, transform. Oh no, it was player. I'm gonna look at the player. That's why I, I I chose player so I could say player. And if you change that to transform, it makes your life easy. So that's all we really want to know about the player, isn't it? This is the transform of it. The game object seems like it would be bigger than a transform anyway, so like if this had to allocate some memory or something, game object might have other things with it. In, it not necessarily in this case, but in other cases it can. So in here, like I can just say transform, just look at player. It's so nice. Right now, I don't actually need this for any reason, doing it this method. Because this kind of takes that out of the, out of the way. This look at kind of does all that direction stuff for you. And then if I just translate um so I wanna translate and I wanna go forward. If I say vector three forward, that's world space. So I need to say transform dot there's all like right, left. So the transform forward, which is relative to this transform, translating our transform forward. It's always just moving forward no matter where he's looking. So what happens is this automatically rotates right towards the player and then moves forward. No speed controls, nothing, just each, uh, if it can, it, it can follow, it should work. Let's see how fast it goes. Um, we should... In transform forward, it is uh, um, it's a vector 3. We should times it by, like, some small amount. We'll just do, like, 0.1. Forget that. We'll just do a speed. <laughs> Let's put that up on top. We'll do a float speed. And we'll give it a default of one. Because every time I do this, I'm, it defaults to zero and nothing moves. And I'm like, why does it not move? And we'll make it public so you can see it. And as it's a tutorial, we'll also make it a slider by saying range. And then the brackets. And then what the range we want it to be. We want the speed to be from like 
Do we want it to zero ever? I'm gonna go zero, comma. And let's do 100 for now. How about 10? <laughs> so we're gonna look at the player, and we are going to trans like transform forward times the speed. So speed is just one value. So it's like say one. So it's gonna it's gonna multiply. against that forward vector it's gonna make it a lot smaller basically uh, that forward vector is zero zero one in local space so it's easy for it's easy math for um, that to do wonder what's gonna happen all right well find out next week when we continue no I'm joking Now, um, I changed the name to from, um, I changed this here. It was game object a second ago. So there's no way it's going to be there. So at the, the evil cube, we didn't make sure that the player, oh, it still worked. I was saying this would be. Not a sign right. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Did I do that right? Yeah, that's right. Evil trigger. It's looking for the evil cube movement. Yep. And the cube is looking for the player. And you can, if you can follow, you can do that thing. All right. Hit play. Now, I can just hit can follow, all right? Woohoo! And it kind of worked. But it still travels forward no matter what. <laughs> I have to look at it in the inspector now. So we get its local access. Okay, yeah, cool. So Z is always, it's always trying to go towards the player. What? It's moving in a circle. That's awesome. Oh, oh, oh. I know exactly what I think, why it's doing what it's doing. There's a um, overload relative to space relative to relative to what relative to yourself. It's just relative to this relative to transform. What happens? This is, I wouldn't normally do it this way. I'm experimenting myself. So watch how experimentation happens. Evil cube. Okay, so if I bring in the player, click on the player, and I bring him in, you know, it works. I gotta work on the movement now. But he, So I'll have it turn toward look at. I wonder how fast look at works. I think that's working better now. Um, oh, the cube. The can follow is true. Player capsule.
So it's just those two lines of code are making all that happen. It's looking at and moving forward. So it takes that much time for it to catch up to look at part. It's, it's probably not the right behavior, and it kind of works kind of okay. Oh, I probably turned it off. Where'd it go? Where'd you go, Evil Cube? Here it's coming back. <laughs> it's not the proper behavior, but it's we have to only deal with the cube movement. Our triggers work. Our player works. The, the player doesn't care. The evil trigger doesn't care. You know, it controls everything. So, what we could do next in the script is really just is here. That ain't the right behavior. It's, you know, you can say to yourself, alright, I'm going to go about this another way or whatever about getting it to move towards you. And so, um, that's one way I've done stuff before. Just like, have it First, rotate it to what you wanted to do, and then just move it forward. <laughs> I think you can, we can probably get rid of the translate thing altogether. I don't even never use translate. Why? If we just do um, player look at. See how it reacts. Reset. Come a little closer. You know what I like to do too, like, is create an object underneath it, little, little, uh, let's say like a little cylinder or something. Lay it on its side. Wrong one. Wrong one. Wait, where's my Z axis? Yeah, that's right. I want to the Z, because Z is pointing forward, right? Here's a um the Z here. And I want this to be two seventy then in one minute. Is that right? No. One eighty? No zero what there. Oh, I've got my scale wrong, sorry, I'm I'm messing up. I'm not doing what I want to do. Point two, point two. Something like that, right? That lines up with the um, the Z axis, so I don't have to like look at it. It just this is debugging stuff that you do, right? And then we get the player, player capsule. I want to make sure it was at zero um, Y. So when I drag it around, hit play. So all the script is doing right now is I just told it to look at. And it's not moving as nicely as I thought. Oh. Oh, because I'm not on um, can follow. It's going to follow me the whole time I'm in the sphere. So that's pretty cool. Let me make that bigger. Sorry, that's probably crap to look at. We can make our trigger bigger already. And tells us nicely. Alright, Vandy, I'll see you when you get back, man. Player capsule. It's probably been 30 minutes since I saw your comment. <laughs> I hope that, yeah, I, this is exactly what you're trying to do. I hope it's, it, well, as long as we're in the red right now, this is all working, you know. And so part of the debug 
they want. So always just having it move forward is just move itself forward once. Um, which is just Z. You should always just increase the Z, right? Increase or decrease the Z. That's all you need. That's awesome. So what I'll do in the code then will change the behavior. Oh, so what I was saying is well, I better take it out first. So he doesn't look anymore. Isn't that cool? He doesn't look anymore. He doesn't even look at you if he's, you're out of that zone. Yeah, you can move anywhere or even around him. He doesn't, just as long as you're in here, he's going to do that, that movement. And that can follow is all I'm doing. Since we made it public, we can just test it anywhere. We're not worried about the trigger. The codes, we can test our, um, we test our box, you know, make sure that movement is right, the behavior is right. Oh, well, yeah, it's always pointing towards that. So you know where problems are. And when there is a problem, think about it. When there's a problem with a method or a system, like what I'm trying to show you with these little separate pieces, you know right where to go. You know, that it's really easy. The referencing, if it annoys you to have to drag in this equal cube thing, like, you know, to do that in sign references, which it, it does bother me after a while, especially if you lose them or change the script, is just to hard code it somehow, like right in, in a start method or something like that, like I showed you, you know, just get right in there and just on start, just go ahead and just like, all right, this evil cube, how am I going to find it? You can find it by name as well. If there's only one in the scene, you can like search the whole scene. You can search the whole hierarchy. You can do all sorts of different searches, but you'd only want to do them once. And just do them here. On start, or the game starts. I don't, you know, it's gonna take. And when we talk about, I mean, to access Sphere Collider, like you know, these ref, like this reference here, it's gonna be really quick. But to get component, it might be like say ten times fast, slower. So it's not that big of a deal, because you're just calling it once. But yeah, we just don't do those things hundreds of times over. Is all. So player look at that's not a bad little um little little uh, unity method helper is it? So usually what I would do instead is we want to move forward and that was just weird movement. Maybe why? I don't understand what. What if we did vector? Oops, I can't do anything here. What if we did space self? And space world? In enum.space. It's an enum. So I can do public space space and just do space. This is pretty spacey, man. Did you follow that? equals space so you can do default default I'm gonna do space self by default so those are enums we'll cover enums another day they're great if you have you don't I'm sure you use them already I don't even know what I'm talking about everybody uses them and um, so now I can just change it to public right yeah Move that down. <laughs> That's super cool. So, where are we at? Space. No. 
nice and low slow. Today's world. There you go. Today's self. That's what it was on before by default. Today's world. We'll see. We'll see how it works. I'll move the I'll move the player around. <laughs> it gets on him. He's like on him like glue. <laughs> I'm gonna do the speed down like really bad. Okay, let me turn the speed down now. It's working really good. Um we really want to multiply this by a really handy tool. Really time dot delta time. This is the time in between the frames. It's a small value. And it, and it moves just like a little bit. But it kind of makes up for movement in the update. It's really cool. Because this update is not, you know, you see your frame rate going up and down. By adding this in there, you make it frame rate independent. We might be done. Scene. Hello, player. This world, I mean, that one, I wanted that to be default. I can just move that out now. Now that we've tested. And let's do the final test. Hit play. Nothing happens. I get inside the trigger. Oh, it starts moving towards me. I'm running away. And he moves around. Time dot delta time does so much. That little bit of movement. And if I just want to keep testing the movement, I just put can follow on. I got a thing that moves all the time. That way I can really adjust the speed if I want. Got you being away from it, you know. If I want it slower, you could even do negative, as far as I know. Why couldn't you? Because you're just a speed value. You you're multiplying negatively. Um, in fact, I'll do that. I'll show you what I mean. There's no reason why not. It's math. Just do negative two to two. I'm gonna start off at one, but um. That's all we need in speed. How cool is that? Listen, I love scripts like this. You see why we've got this one simple update loop. It doesn't do anything unless it's actually working. And that's that's when you need an update loop. It's one of the things that are working. And it's just sitting there smoothly. It looks at the player first. So it's rotated the transform. Whatever rotation, Euler, quaternion it is, it doesn't matter. You don't have to think about it. It's there looking at the player. <laughs> and then it just translates forward. You know, at a speed that we multiply by speed and delta time. That beautiful value that just kind of smooths everything out. It's like a spring. In a way, like that. Like a dampening leaf spring in your car. Okay. It's just a small value though. Of like, it's it's basically like depends on how many frame rates you are. It's, it's like sixty ish or one hundred and twenty ish or whatever. It doesn't matter, but it smooths everything out. Make the trigger a little bigger. Oh, it's gonna go really bigger. Doesn't really matter now. We've got three separate things, so you can go ahead. And I've got no scripts on the on the player, so you can make a movement script for the player for your keyboard and your mouse. You know, we can do that um, another day. We can. We've got it. We've got our code. It's separate. We've got just three game objects. One's an evil zone. 
one's an evil object that basically kind of lives with the zone, you know, and that's why we um, we told it the evil cube zone has a reference to evil cube. We don't have to worry about it coming in and out of the trigger or anything. We had a lot of little stuff. And I'm going to drag all these scripts right now. File, save scenes. Oops, I didn't even save the scene. Imagine if something were to happen. Ugh. One. Two. We'll call this evil scene one. I like it. Um, as far as our project size, we don't have to do any type of um, organization here. I don't even. How about we delete player trigger? Delete that. Player trigger. We we'll just give you the reference. File save scene. Well, because we get so far. We started here with player trigger, it duplicated it, and then made it into evil cube zone, you know what I mean? And it's moved a long way. And so it's kind of cool to have your reference and go back. I like to keep scripts like that and say, what did I do there? So really, we only have two scripts. Three game objects, two scripts. One goes on the trigger. One goes on the evil cube. Um, and the player needs to have the to tag the player, obviously. So I will um, show an explorer. Modify by taunt. I will give you all three. Let's see what Discord probably won't let me do three things. See what happens. Yep, I said hit OK button and then uploaded them in those order. Oh, I'm so glad you like that, Kushoff. So glad. Um, I think I might, I might end the stream there. I've been streaming since 11, and it's now 3, so that's like getting close to 4 hours. Um, I won't just abruptly do that. I just want to check a few things. I will put the Discord link in there. So I just, um, there's the Discord link. You can go there, join in, come out. Galactic can be in it. It's in there a lot. Bandy comes by once in a while, but he doesn't like Discord, I don't think. <laughs> um, you know, and we we like to talk game dev, and you can ask me anything online. I mean, when I'm not streaming, ask me questions, and it gives me ideas for tutorials. Like that's honestly why I'm making this tutorial is because of of Twitter and Discord. There's been three, four different people in the last week and then a few streamers I was watching that all need the same tutorial what I was kind of doing today and I think that I'm like okay I need to start practicing some tutorials and so for me it's practicing tutorials for you guys it's learning better code we all win and I didn't get to call anybody names or I mean nothing bad happened today <laughs> should we go raid somebody though I need some hype, man. I barely have any followers. I haven't been streaming too regularly, but it's it's getting good. Let's see. We're gonna find somebody, can't we? Okay, so you should have all those. Um, hey, if you want, I was wondering how big this scene is. I can also drag the scene in for you. Nah, you do it from scratch. It's not that bad. It's three game objects. What am I talking about? <laughs> Wait, a nice guy. I'm just checking out creative. 
We do a raid for somebody. Come on, let's see you. We can do Skawi Interactive. He's pretty cool. Dude, I want you guys to go see this guy, XRA. I don't know if you've been by his channel. We're going to go host him. Um, I forget the command. Damn, I haven't freaking streamed enough. Every time I go to stream, something else happens. Host XRA underscore. Yeah, anyway, um, before we go over there, X yeah, that's that's the freaking one. Let me see here. I'll post. Yeah, yeah. W T A F must have um <laughs> sparked the bot. I love true. Oh, not that. That. Damn it. Damn it, damn it, damn it. You know when things just don't go right sometimes? Alright, we're gonna go over here and, um,. Can we, do you guys want to do a raid message, please? It just helps out, man. And he's a cool guy, too. And I, I was going to tell you about him before I went over there as I'm writing my raid message out. Um, oh, I've got one probably already written out. Did I write one out? I should have been more prepared at this. So the XRA, he's making dude the dude the the XRA guy is is freaking a genius shader programmer and watching him code is cool. Like and it's it's kinda of the same kind of the way I do it sometimes. He doesn't not doing so much tutorials I've seen, but he's actually making this game and it's Freaking awesome, man! It's it's just freaking awesome to watch what he's doing. He's making it's the game he's making right now is all black and white, but he's making this cool scanner with his shader. It makes all these really cool effects. You like exploring, and um, I just want you to see him and give him some love for me. Um, what's the Twitch raid? I was looking for the Twitch raid bomb, and I can't figure out what it is. If it's capital T or I used to used to write that stuff. Oh, that's right. here it is. Here, can you guys, I'm going to go over there, and if you want, um, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's what I wanted. All right. So if you want to copy and paste that into the link, follow the link. I'm all gonna go over there and hang out for a little while. Just calm on down. Have a cigarette in the background. And um, thank you guys so much for coming out. I will be back. Uh, very shortly, probably like um the next day, next day or two, and I'll see you guys then. So now I'm typing in post x r a underscore, and I'm gonna hit enter. If this works, so the idea is similar to uh, how multiplayer games might handle lag. Uh, the players in a heavily glitched area kind of start tracking the uh, the grid cells that we pass us through, um, and then start to apply lag, which will sort of. Uh, 
blinds you back to those positions, depending on how laggy it is. So if it's super laggy, it'll just keep retracing the same steps. Um, depending. I mean, not all the players actually still. I'm gonna try it so the player still still is moving uh, normally. It's just you can't see that you're 